Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of Malcriada, Thoughts of a Girl in a Sick World. And what a sick, sick world it is. Ah. This is your host, V, with another episode here for you guys. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm back. I'm back, you guys. Uh, I, you guys thought... You guys thought that I was just gonna stop. You're like, oh yeah, she did her few episodes and then she's not gonna post them again. Wrong! Wrong, 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 wrong. I am. I am gonna talk more. And. Because why not? Because for funsies. Because there's a lot to talk about, okay? There's a lot to discuss. And I'm going to just scream my thoughts into the void, if that's okay with you guys, if you don't have to listen to it. But how much fun would it be if you did and you we knew, we understood each other. We understood what we meant and what I think. And just know the thoughts of Malcriada. Maybe you're like, oh shit, oh my god, I'm a Malcriada too. I should go on her podcast. Yeah, if you would like to. You'd have to be very interesting for me to want to talk to you. <laughs> so, b- become interesting. <laughs> not that you're not already. I'm sure you guys are. I'm sure you guys are very interesting. Um, If you are listening to this show. Ah! Okay, whatever. <laughs> What's up, guys? I'm back. Sorry for the weird, aggressive intro. But then again, I'm not sorry. It was a little funny, right? <laughs> um... Thank you for listening and coming back and just being patient, being so patient with me. I've gone, I have traveled from the plain desert lands of the fucking valley through Idaho, 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 uh, Ohio, right? Was it Ohio? I don't know. A little bit of Portland, a little bit of Colorado. And Arizona. Arizona was first, I believe. But I traveled by car. By car. In the car with Diego. Ex-passenger princess. That was scary. That was horrible. That was horrifying. But hey. We made it. We're alive. It's okay. And I would like to say, I would like to say that we're thriving a little bit. Mental health is hard. Always. But on paper? On paper, though, we're kind of thriving. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm back, you guys. So I'm just here with a little update. A little, like, hey, guys, I'm back. I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to give you a little update of what's happening. The plans for the future. What to expect again. Um, and, yeah, let's just get started. Okay, so first, I'm going to give you guys a little update, and then I'm going to go into like the main themes of the, basically from the move up until now, the themes that I've experimented with in my life during this this period of time, of moving, of transitioning, of in, transitioning to a new environment, and to Washington, and just being a little Latina buddy up here, instead of down there, you know? Okay go by the way um that's the first one i filmed this is the the first one i filmed here in washington actually um i'm gonna have it come out uh the quality isn't that good as this one because dick got me a new mic <laughs> yeah he got me that new sexy mic and a new laptop and a uh what is this thing called interface i think it's called interface and headset and a mouse (laughs) and a desk and a department (laughs) and and everything (laughs) yeah yeah i get princess treatment guys that's something you should know about me um i get princess treatment even though i'm a bitch so 
who's winning i don't know i think i think that's pretty cool the thing is like i'm a bitch in normal society's terms not in like actual terms like oh she's a fucking bitch maybe to you maybe to other people but not to diego okay sometimes to diego but we literally when that happens like i'm like oh my god i'm so sorry that was not okay of me to do and i apologize but i'm not a bitch to him like oh my god she's like starving him and she doesn't cook for him and um oh like she she doesn't behave like a good wife and if she if she if she was a good wife then she wouldn't be dressing like that or she wouldn't be talking like that or she wouldn't be whatever whatever see i don't think that's a bitch i think that's a baddie i think that's a slay i think that's cunty and he knew what he was getting into you know what i mean like he knew i definitely progressed though like i was like oh first i'm gonna do a little cool uh a little cool makeup mm, i'm gonna do a little cool makeup and then i just kept like, gaining like bad bitch like points i think this is, happens to like a lot of like uh women and femmes and like uh, everyone who likes to experiment with makeup and fashion and things like that so and it's happening to diego honestly it literally is like i see it happening i see it happening i see it happening to a lot of people it's really fun it, it, you guys know that like fucking annoying ass drawing where like a girl like it's like super bodyfied and then she like sees a book and she's like what a book there's pages wow and then she's like i'm gonna become uh just a skinnier white girl like i'm just gonna become this girl for to that girl with a sweater and glasses and she like her boobs just disappear and her ass disappears and that's like what what <laughs> that's what you get from a book <laughs> the power of books but and i i understand what they're trying to say they're like they're trying to say this bitch is trashy and if she picks up a fucking, if she would pick up a fucking book, then this stupid slut, this stupid slut would be smart and white. <laughs> and it's like, um, they're girlfriends. Yeah, leave them alone. Um, anyways, I'm like the opposite. My, for me, it was the opposite. Like, first, I, well, no, I always had big a big butt. But I didn't have boobs. The boobs were new. So flip the two, two things. Um, and then I was like, what? A book? What? And then I just become like this super baddie, uh, hyper feminine, hyper goth, emo, commie, witch, uh, go, go. Yeah, it was just a lot. It was just a lot. Um, it was really cool, though. I enjoyed it. It was like this is in my final form. Like you, nah. yeah. So then we made it. We settled in. Spent our last days. Uh, my dad cried. It was crazy. Um, and yeah. Then my my family left us. Diego went to work, and now it's go time. <laughs> it's adult life time. It's you're on your own time, which. I'll never really be on my own until maybe, not even, not even until my parents died. Because even if my parents die, I feel like they'll talk to me and, and I'll, I'll feel them and shit. I don't, like, I don't feel like I'll ever really, really be alone. I feel like, if anything, I'm more, I feel more alone with, I'm with them. <laughs> like, when they're distant, I'm just like, hmm, mom, hmm, dad. And again, any immigrant daughter can relate to this because fuck they're crazy our family are but this is the thing like our family is crazy not by choice it's a reactionary it's a reactionary it's a it's a defense mechanism against colonialism so yeah so yeah and propaganda and like brainwashing like they were literally brainwashed like they're also we have to we have to also remember that they're also a victim of the system just as much as we are um they're just gotten older and more tired you know but i digress <clears throat> that was that moving on we settled in we're here we're here and we're queer and we're slaying and we're pussy popping everywhere and we were like oh my god diego what should we do our first 
outing was to the comedy show. It was to uh, the principal from Abbott, Janelle James. She was amazing. I watched her in um, Abbott Elementary and I loved her so much. And we saw her. She was so funny. She had an opener. The opener was really funny too. Um, the club, the comedy, Tokoma Comedy Club was so cool. Oh, we went to eat uh, sushi. And one of the dudes was there. One guy was with his wife and he bought us a drink and he bought us sushi. And I was like, okay are they swingers because like they're not down for that and honestly not right now i'm not no no i'm not i wasn't down for them not for them um like like i'm sure you're i'm sure you're a great person but like um you're the vibes are off vibes were off i felt very in very like like put on the spot um and he was just like dumping like information on us and it's like like, he was really nice, though. Like, he was nice, but it was just, like, mm, just felt weird. I, I don't even know how to tell you. And then people are like, oh, you can't just, like, don't like people based on fives. Mm, absolutely, I can. Absolutely, I can. You're going to tell me, I, you're not going to tell me what I can't can't do. I can do it. And here's the thing, like, I have this thing where every time I meet someone and they're my best friends and they tell me something about someone or I meet them and I'm like, I'm like, I don't like that person. That person didn't give me good vibes. And then something happens. Like it's always ha- it's always happened to me. Uh, I'm my mother's daughter. I don't know what to tell you. We're brujas. I don't know what to tell you. Literally, literally. And but nothing bad happened. Thank God. He just bought us a drink and then we skedaddled because we were like he was like, oh, are you guys need to do something? And I was like, yes, we have a comedy show at seven. And it was like six, uh, like uh, fifty something. We were walking there. And yeah. Um. And then we went to a goth club, which was my perfect cup of tea because, um, how do you say it? Well, it wasn't a goth club. It was a goth bar. And I, which I was really excited about because I had found like my, my place, my scene, my, my thing down in the valley, right? Which was like the techno scene, um, the EDM scene, the house scene. Um, and yeah, and I was scared to move over here because I was scared that I wasn't going to be able to find something like that up here, which I was very much wrong and I was happy I'm wrong. And thank you to my best friend for reassuring me, be like, girl, you haven't even been there. You have to go check it out first. And then you could cry about it. And I was like, okay, fine. (laughs) Oh, okay. Yeah. And I've also found a goth emo, whatever, a cafe. And everyone knows that, like, every, like, goth is gay. So every goth space is, like, a safe queer space. Um, I went to a comedy. King Comedy Show was amazing. Amazing. Roses, 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 roses. The people there were amazing. Amazing vibes. Amazing um, drinks. Food was made, but, like, whatever. It was just, like, it wasn't, like, gourmet food. It was just, like, snacks for the comedy show. Um, and, yeah. Uh... I've had a lot of imposter syndrome. <laughs> um, like a lot. And I guess this is where it starts, you guys. This is where it starts. We're gonna talk about the theme of the episode, the the title, the everything. I'm alive. She's alive. She's back. She's come back from depression and now she is reinventing herself. Which is horrible. <laughs> which is honestly really scary um and one of the things that i have to deal with is fucking imposter syndrome and it's fucking so scary when you are just facing life like there's no one behind you and yeah i have people with me obviously i have my husband i have my friends but in life this is your experience you know that's just someone that you met they have their own life and they're going to like have to figure shit out on their own Partnership doesn't equal happiness, I would say. Um, companionship, whatever. So, yeah. Reinventing yourself, it sounds so, like... People have made it such a, like, oh my god, become unrecognizable by the end of the summer. 
that's scary because as someone who has dealt with dissociation and all that shit like i yearn nothing more than to be able to recognize myself to be able to be happy when i look in the mirror um and to be able to be happy with what i have and floating around in my little uh, brain juices or whatnot um and yeah so i wrote a little poem <laughs> i wrote a little poem about the situation and if you guys can listen to it you have no choice you have no choice you will listen to me you will listen to my art <laughs> Um, okay, let me get into a little poetry slam vibe so I can read it and you guys could actually feel it in your nalgas, okay? Tell me if you feel it in your nalgas. If not, tell me where else you felt it. <laughs> Reinventing yourself. Oh, the lengths I'd go. Shut up the unrehearsed melodies in the hollows of my throat. The yearn to be perfect. Perfect, perfect, and only so. Anything to be perfect. See how far I'll go. I'll burn off my flesh. I'll rip out my hair. I'll crush my lungs. All to reach that blinding glow. Perhaps bright enough to ignite my soul? <laughs> no. Crawl back into bed, begging God to shed my skin my blood, my bones, while reinventing myself, I've never felt more alone. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I'll be here every Thursday. But yeah, basically that's how it feels. Like, oh my god. Like, it's really hard. It feels like I'm just like, crawling outside of my body into a new body and it's scary because you're have having to face so much um like confrontation about things that i have been putting off thinking about all my life actually now that i think about it like like trauma and abuse that i've like endured from family and i think this is a very common thing in latino and immigrant households um not because they're latino or specifically <laughs> it's just the the shit end of the stick it, the chips fell how they did and now this happens to a lot of of malcriadas and that's not okay but yes, I am very much working on everything. And even though um, being Frankenstein is not easy <laughs> and it, all, it sometimes feels very lonely, I just want to try to remind myself that I'm not alone. And even if I am alone, like, hell yeah. <laughs> like, fuck. All right, but let's talk more about like the imposter syndrome. You know, I feel like that's a really big one in our in the Macriada community. Okay, yeah, yeah. Like, like I said, like on paper, like it seems like I did a really good job. Like, right? Like, on paper, it seems like I did everything I needed to do. But there's a chunk of my like soul missing still. Like, really big, actually and i'm scared essentially essentially i'm scared and i don't know like it's just hard like breaking through realities and i don't mean that in like a trippy acid trip kind of way i mean that in like oh like i've been lying been lied to my whole life um so like i went to school right and i feel like that you could get this at any school and not even at any school you could like learn this from life in s in general because like what what are these academic papers going to write about real life situations so i don't don't think that yeah anyways um i would learn like oh like domestic abuse is bad and then i'd be like what that's bad but my parents do that all the time <laughs> 
or like what like my parents hit me all the time my my my, uh my parents hit each other all the time like that's normal i'm like what and then your reality breaks and then you keep learning and more realities keep breaking and breaking and then your mind is just like what do i i I don't know what to believe in anymore and i'm really nervous that's normal right but at the same time it's really scary it's very scary and that's some i guess how does like you're like bitch what the fuck does that have to do with imposter syndrome was because like i feel like i don't deserve any of this that like i'm getting and by this i mean basic human rights (laughs) Like, I have my own space now. I have my own house. I have my own water. I have my own shelter. My own food. And I even have a little bit of money left for more. For more things um, that I need in this type of society. (laughs) And I feel like, damn, like, I have all this. I have all this. I don't deserve it. Like, what have I done to deserve this? And I feel like that's a lot, a lot of that has to do with, like, brainwashing and propaganda. Like, you should earn your water. You should earn your food. You should earn your house. You should earn everything that you have. You're not entitled to anything. And it's like, why not? Why shouldn't I be? And I feel like that has a lot of impact on us malcriadas. Because if you're malcriada, you're, uh, you're, either, you're either either or or all. Um, a, an older daughter, a sister, a do- um, an immigrant daughter, a first gen student, um, a wife, a friend, um, who just wants to do the right thing and is trying to go against everything right on paper. And and it feels we have I feel like we have a lot of shame because we're told like, oh well. You have to be this certain way or else you're not going to get love. You're not going to get... Your husband's not going to love you. Like, you're not going to find a husband. And, oh no, the world will fucking uh, explode if I don't get a husband. If I don't get a little ring on my little finger. Like, I'm a horrible woman. Fuck that. Then I don't want to be a woman. You know, like... And that's the thing. Like, I have all those things. I have all those things and it feels like... And I still feel like I want more. And that makes me feel a little selfish. It's like, like, oh, on top, on top of, like, your husband taking care of you, on top of all the things that you have been gifted already, you want more? Why? And that has stopped me a lot from chasing, like, my dreams. Like, like, what voice is that in my head? That voice is my parents. Like, I already gave you everything. I gave you food. I gave you water. I gave you this. What more do you want? Just go to school and make get a job that gets a lot of money so I have so I don't have to work anymore. And I think like a really big part of that is realizing like oh, that's not my voice. That's the voice that my parents had. But that's not even my parents' voice. Even though they don't know that. Even though they don't know that, that's not their voice. And that's something that I just have to tell myself for, like, my sanity. But it's also true when you think about it. Like, your parents weren't born and didn't and th- and think like that, you know? My parents weren't born and think like that. In fact, like, when I talk to my dad alone and my mom alone, I can get them to, like, make sense of a lot of things. But then they put them together and it's like, oh... The need to perform uh, masculinity and femininity arises again when I when they're bunched together, you know? They're not allowed to be free from these systems and these standards placed on them anymore when they're in front of each other. Because my dad must be a man and my mom must be a woman. It just sucks, you know? <laughs> it sucks. Um, I wish they could read their minds. I wish they could read each other's minds. I know that my mom could read my dad's mind. I feel like it's a little worse for her. I feel like it's a lot worse for her, actually. Like, fuck. But that's the thing with us girls. Like, we can read each other's minds. <laughs> uh, and not just girls. Like, like vagina. <laughs> like, the, the femmes. The girlies. 
uh, the non-binaries. Like, we get it. But it's people who are so, like, sh- uh, brainwashed with patriarchy, capitalism, white supremacy, machismo, etc. Like, they f- can't because they've, they've been so infantilized and been so, like, venerated, put on a pedestal for just being. How nice must that be? How fucking nice must that be? And yeah, those are the thoughts I have when I am thinking about like, do I deserve this or not? So let's all say it together. Fuck you. (laughs) Fuck you, stupid little thought, word, voice thing. Why shouldn't I have more? This world is made to experience itself. So if I want to experience um being a burlesque dancer if i want to experience being a go-go dancer if i want to experience being a director being a writer being a wife being a daughter being a sister being everything i can and i shall and it (laughs) um a singer here's the thing i don't even want to be like a super popular rich a billionaire singer writer whatever like if i would if I was like just like a little singer at like a jazz club, like just like in the dark, you know, I'm just mumbling my little music away. That'd be so fun for me and I'd be happy. I don't think I don't think like super rich pop stars should exist. Like, yeah, I don't think they should exist. Um, I think if anything, like I feel like that lifestyle is more um like romanticized and like idealized than like actual billionaires you know like billionaires are just like doing numbers and business and boring shit and yeah like they get to go do all the fun stuff but like they don't have a passion for anything they just have money and like they you know what i mean like and i'm not saying that they they don't have hobbies or whatever but like well you can buy everything like what's the point it's kind of like dying honestly moving on culture shock (laughs) um so okay it just feels i came here to washington it just feels like i'm watching tv there's just a lot of white people (laughs) like a lot of white people what was that what was that movie where there's like zero zero poc and like no one like said anything no one was like oh that's weird like what was that movie you guys know of those movies though right yeah i'm sure you do like there's lots of movies but there's just no 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 mexicans no black people no asian like there's just white people yeah well when i was little like that's like from a mexican person um from a a peruana from a chicana or whatever a valley girl like yeah when i go to when i go outside when i go to the tienda when i go to whatever um i see people who all look like me you know like that's my representation my community um when i watch tv that's i'm peeking into another reality it's kind of like oh i don't belong there there's no one who looks like me there why would i be there and yeah that's how it feels when i'm watching tv when i was little at least um and the poc that were represented were like cartoons you know um and now i moved out right and i'm up here and it's like oh shit i'm like watching tv (laughs) so that's how it feels i feel very dissociative and I'm like, is this real? Is it not? Like, this, these people don't look real. It Like, you guys are just the people I see on my TV. Like, wow. That's crazy. I've had other microaggressions um, in the past when I traveled up north. But so far, I don't think I've experienced any microaggressions. There's an, a dude who, like, looked me and my husband up and down. We're like, oh, hablo espanol. And this other one who was, like, we were speaking in Spanish. I was getting my Wi-Fi set up, and I was, like, oh, like, 
translating stuff to my dad because we needed his help or whatever and then he, the dude just said oh don't do esta la biblioteca and i was like <laughs> i don't i don't know if that's count as a microaggression i think that counts as me being annoyed like i'm not even offended i'm just annoyed like i'm not like sensitive like it's just like ugh. like new material call me a beaner to my face like put a kick into it i don't know do something something damn like John de Stalbi do take a corny no habla espanol corny anyways but all the emo cool little um like goth and like all little like non-binary queers and like white people that i've been seeing like they're all really nice shout out to y'all so in short i was in the latinx inclusive show that gets canceled in like a season and then right now i made it onto like the white lead new coming of age like show that goes on for like 14 seasons so it's crazy yeah it's really cool i'm like oh cool and let me just say that there are a lot of cool things around here like weed is legal yeah <laughs> but there's lots of burlesque it's like a really big thing up here um there's live music but the most different thing up here is like nature because all that stuff is in the valley too you know um is the nature i've just never seen like i've just never seen trees this big and like the lakes and like the mountains and i'm literally like latina bella literally latina bella like bella if she was like emo and like a bad bitch because <laughs> i need to look we're both like we both marry young <laughs> oh my god we both moved to washington mm -hmm, for a new start <laughs> and we're both depressed <laughs> yeah just just let me have it okay whatever okay oh okay okay so there's this okay i'm just gonna tickle this subject because i think i want to make like a full episode on it yeah are you ready are you ready ready senora dissociation so this is what i'm calling basically when i'm like doing something that i swore i would never be doing or i just at the time i didn't like it when i saw my mom behave this way or act like that and now i'm participating in those same actions after i said i would never and uh it really makes me dissociate because i just think of my mom and i have like like it feels like i'm living through my mom and i just can understand her better but at the same time, it's like, fuck, like, I wouldn't have done it that way. I wouldn't have done this if I was in your shoes. Uh, yeah, I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to have a whole episode on that. Let me know what you guys think when you hear the words Senora Dissociation. Um, you guys can, like, DM me something or you can add, you could answer the poll question on Spotify. And last, the last thing that I'm going to tell you guys today, the last thing I'm going to talk about, the last thing I'm going to talk about is healing, which is annoying and stupid. But anyways, with all that being said, I'm still trying to heal. And the worst realization is that I haven't done anything for myself. When you're a daughter, pero like una malcriada, eh. There's so much guilt that makes you want to do all the shit you enjoy a escondidas, you know? And I kept my queerness a secret, my dancing a secret, my singing a secret, my writing a secret. I, like, my, my parents, like, they knew that I drew because, like, you can't really hide, like, a canvas, right? But, like, they didn't know I really did anything else, you know? Like, they didn't know that I liked dance this much. They didn't know that I liked music, singing. They don't really know me. They know, like that i'm sleepy they know how my farts smell they know you know these like very human mundane things about me but they don't know me sometimes you know anyways i never wanted to show my family anything like anything like this because they're always such bullies and some were even like abusers to me and now it's like my time so i'm not in texas I'm not in Texas, and the people who hurt me 
can get to me now so lots of people don't get this choice lots of people don't get this chance so i'm really uh grateful for that and i'm trying to just be grateful and take what i've been giving without guilt take what i have without guilt and maybe make it into something else and help others with it i guess that's the only way i could pay it back right and yeah so i'll be doing a lot of stuff uh, be trying to do a lot of stuff but yeah have patience <laughs> <laughs> and yeah let me plug a little resource right here um it's called the south texas equality project um i'll link it somewhere somehow and again i feel really i don't want to say upset but i feel a little like regret that I wasn't be able to um, immerse myself and uh, be part of more things down in the valley. I was very depressed. I was very shameful of myself, and I, all, that's all where all the that's where all my trauma is essentially. I love the valley. I love the culture. I love the people, but that was where I was so heavily bullied, heavily abused. Um. And I wish I had resources. I wish I could have gone to um, a nonprofit that had that offered support groups for queer um, individuals in the valley. And yeah, so let me read you guys a little bit about the organization. So here's the story behind. The South Texas Equality Project is a coalition of organizations that work to advocate for, celebrate, uplift, educate, and provide support to the LGBTQA plus community of the Rio Grande Valley. STEP is an ongoing partnership between different organizations and individuals focusing on the common goal of creating a more affirming community for LGBTQ plus people in the valley. Yeah, so I'm here on their website and it says that they have support groups, they have LGBTQ plus support groups, transparent RGV um, support groups, that's amazing, trans talk support groups, um, RGV, um, LGBTQIA parenting. So, hey, if you're queer, uh, maybe your parent is a little on the fence, um, maybe they just don't understand, maybe you know that your parent loves you, but they lack the education and seeing like um, information come from a peer of them, like an adult, uh, there's an organization behind it. Not that we need anything to prove um, our existence is valid. It just helps those who aren't, who were literally brainwashed and colonized and beat and were beaten so much that all of the um, acceptance was bashed out of them i feel like that's happened to a lot of our parents <laughs> but hey uh follow them on instagram follow them on everything step rgv step rgv you guys uh, but yeah that's my little plug organization for the day that's my episode um thank you so much for listening to she's alive my comeback <laughs> episode um, it's been a fucking trip and I'm really excited and looking forward. I have a lot of projects coming up for you guys. Uh, I'm going to be focusing on poetry. I'm going to be focusing on um, just lots of stuff. I don't want to give it away yet. <laughs> and just I just want to keep talking to you guys. I want to have interviews. I still want to interview people from the Valley. That still hasn't happened. That still hasn't happened. I interviewed my friend. Um, but there still needs to be more. So hopefully I can get that set up so you guys can enjoy and maybe it could, you know, inspire, inspire you a little bit. All right. Thanks so much for listening to another episode of Malikriada, Thoughts of a Girl in a Sick World. This was your host, Z, signing off.